All right, let me talk about the time how I put my boy and I in a very dangerous predicament that I don't recommend the listener and the viewer from doing. You get what I'm saying? Unless you're a real good pro at vetting out people and understanding the kinks of what people do, all right? So this is dangerous. This is one of those don't try this at home moments, all right? So I'm leaving Manizales on my way to Medellin because one of my boys that's been in contact with me was like, look, man, I'm seeing your content. I want to see what this is all about. I said, all right, cool. I'm leaving Manizales. I can go straight to Medellin. If you really want, you can just come to Medellin and meet me there. I'm going to hop on a taxi, pick you up at the airport, and then, yo, we're going to stay somewhere around the area of Medellin so you can get an idea and feel what things are like. He was like, bet. So he decided to pull up. He bought his ticket and came to Colombia. I did exactly as I said. I hopped on the taxi and headed out to that super far airport that everybody knows that's out there in Rio Negro. Picked them up. We got a spot in Envigado. Envigado is the spot just shy south of Medellin. So my boy, he speaks zero Spanish and he himself was a little apprehensive about coming out. I said, look, man, you're going to enjoy it. Come on out. I'm here. I can speak some Spanish. I'll be able to handle whatever you need and I'll just be your chaperone. All right. And I decided to choose Envigado as our base within Antioquia because I felt that it is a little out the way for us to stay hidden and not expose our hand too early if you was to choose a Poblado or a Morales. Though eventually we decided to go over there to meet up with our other boy. But for first time, I said, look, we're going to go out here to Envigado and this is where we'll do our practice run before anything. We went to the Envigado Mall, got some food, and we talk about this Airbnb we took as a strategy. All right, day one crib, stove and all that stuff, the gas on and off, TV with the balcony. Yo, I'm in the Envigado region. Look at my apartment. With the doorman over there. Mm, someone's cooking. The view of uh, Colombia. The view of Medellin over there. Envigado, bro. Envigado. This is the hangout spot number one. My boy is in his room. Bathroom number one room with another room over there room i took with another view solo bathroom ah oh, man i dig it so between us we was paying like 15 dollars each for this airbnb which came with a stove two bathrooms and three bedrooms the last bedroom was where we locked all our things up. We had separate rooms as well. It had a nice little patio and it was pretty dope. All right. So this leads us to the conversation at hand with this girl I was talking to. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I did meet her on the internet. I believe this was Columbia Cupid and her name was Carol. But this Carol was Venezuelan. Not the Manizales Carol that you guys seen in the last video. If you haven't seen that, that video is going to be posted up above. But I was talking to a girl named Carol from Colombia Cupid, from Venezuela, 30 years of age. And we were talking for, let's say, close to about a year before, you know, I actually pulled up. And there were a lot of warning signs that I've gotten where I believe I'm going to show some text messages on how this was going. She did seem too into me i know i'm a handsome fella but if a woman seems too into me usually there's going to be something wrong with that and within the course of our conversation she was always trying to figure out or ask if i was around metagene if i'm in metagene who am i talking with i'm with anybody things of that nature you know i tease her about that every now and then it made me think that look man i know women especially if you haven't met them before i know they ain't that quick or that thirsty. Of course, there'll be some people that'll be happy to see you, but no, no woman this fine is going to be that thirsty to meet up with me. You get what I'm saying? Unless they want something. A lot of these girls know they're attractive and they'll use that to their advantage to see if they can get something from you. They will check your tricking meter. How much are you willing to trick on them? They'll say something along the lines of, hey, if we get a relationship with me, can you pay for my everything? Can you give me money for the kids or whatever have you? They'll do this to check to see where you at if you're a full-time trick. 
but I ultimately ignored that. And I guess she was playing the long game where he didn't ask, but she was very persistent in meeting with me. One of the things that she said when I was in Menazales and I was saying that I'm on my way, she wanted to know like very move and how I was moving. And I was playing into it because then I was going to give my boy practice anyway. I'm like, look, I'm going to show my guy firsthand what could happen if you caught slipping. So I was purposely playing into this for the fact that in the back of my hand, if she isn't being malicious, then something good will come out of it. That's why I was still playing the game. If not, then I know what my edging strategy will be and how to keep us all safe in the long run. It came to a point where she was like, oh, where you are? And like, yeah, I'm pulling up to Medellin and it's going to be like about two hours till I pull up and said, oh, are you going to see me? At this point, I'm not going to ditch my friend. My friend, my boy is coming with me. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be in Medellin for a while. So there's always going to be opportunities for us to meet. And I figured if I'm going out, I'm not bringing him to Lorellis. I'm not bringing him out there and to meet a stranger that I haven't met yet. That would be, we don't know what situation will happen. So I decided to make the meeting point our spot because we already have security and it's a controlled environment. We already have locks, we have safes. It's the environment was controlled, so I decided to say, we'll do this as a meeting spot. And then she says, her friend too. And I'm like, I, in my head, I didn't know that she was bringing a friend or she was going to have a friend meet me solo in La Setenta. I was under the impression that she wanted to just meet me, but I didn't know a friend was going to be involved. Kind of like the situation when I met Paula and she had her model friend pull up. So I think it was another one of these situations, but you know, she was Venezuelan. I haven't built that rapport. I've never seen her compared to Paulo on the airplane. I met Paula, but this one I've never met. And for her to, to say that, oh, and my friend too, I was like, mm, I don't like how this is going. I said, yeah, your friend could come to the apartment too. That's when I briefed my boy and said, hey man, something gonna go down, be prepared. And I'm telling you, this is first hand of what they do as a player. I let him see the text. If I told him, I said, look, if a woman is this thirsty, keep your guard up because Nine times out of ten, this could turn out to be a scope situation or something bad could happen. So I, I agreed. I said, yeah, you and your friend, y'all both could come. Send a picture of your friend. Send IDs. We were both sending each other the pictures for safekeeping. And then we sent it to another person for, for additional safekeeping. So I said, yeah, you can come. I'll send a taxi for you. Make sure you have a picture so we can show the guard who you are. And this was about midnight. I told him, I said, what time should we come? I said... But looking at the time, I guess the time you can come is around 11 o'clock. And that's another thing. It's 11 p.m. And Yaz wanted to go to Lorella's past midnight. That's why my radar was going off. It's like, you wanted me to go out there to Lorella's. And you wanted me to go out there in La Setenta at this hour and not bring my friend. I said, no, nah, we're keeping things controlled. We're going to bring it to my spot. And if anything happens, it is what it is. If nothing happens, then there'll be a learning experience for both of us. So they pulled up. The uh, security guards were downstairs. I made sure I gave them a tip. I said, here, hold down this 20000 Under no circumstances do they leave without us. I'll come see you again when we leave it, right? So they pulled up to the apartment. And I noticed the body language. Her friend was more cool, relaxed, and collected. And Carol, she did see a little bit uneasy. She was all right at first. She was wearing a jacket, figure looking nice. Her friend was I-ish. And I, I told my boy, I said, hey, man, that's going to be your situation right there. So I know you don't know any Spanish, but this is going to be learning experience, right? So I said, let's pay attention to see how long it'll take them for them to access where the alcohol is. Because that's one of the main things that they'll use in order to put us into that scopolamy. And not even five minutes with them coming in, those accents turn on the music and where's the alcohol? I looked at my boy and I said, uh, yeah, where's the alcohol? And I had to make up a lie. I said, look, being how it's past midnight, the stores are closed, so we can't get any alcohol. I have water if you want some water, you know, and you can make yourself comfortable. I pulled out my phone, pretended I was going to order something on Rappi. I didn't. I said, yeah, it looked like their clothes are too late. So, I mean, we can still have fun without it. She didn't look all too happy about that, but she went through with the night. And then it came to a point where I said, bro, I told him, I said, look, we're going to separate them. I want to bring, you don't want to bring her to my room. I want to bring Carol to my room, and then you want to take care of the friend. We'll see what happens. All right? This is the point where I think that she started to get a little bit apprehensive. And 
I think that I noticed that she started to get uncomfortable. It's fine. So when she got into the room, she sat on the side of my bed, right? You know, I had the TV on. I had the lights a little dim. She sat on the side of the bed, and she didn't take off her shoes. She didn't take off her jacket. And I said, yeah, you want to take off your jacket? You want to make yourself look comfortable? I got popcorn. You know anything? She said, no, I'm cool. And as she sat on the side of the bed, she was playing with her phone. So I always noticed that she was on her phone quite a bit, you know, as I was trying to strike a conversation with her, whatever have you. And I believe they came at midnight, and I think within an hour or two of them being inside, I think Carol first initiated that she wanted to leave. And I'm like, all right, well, if you want to leave, then I, right. like, I'm not coding you hostage. I said, all right, you can leave. And probably, this is where I'm like, you probably should have gotten your own taxi. But yeah, I said, all right, you need a taxi back to be in New York? So I sent them a taxi back to, I think, Lorez. I think that's where those things are. I'm not sure if they had somebody set up in Lorellis or it's probably because it was close for them that why they wanted us to go over there. But I did see it. It was kind of strange how she had all this energy in the, the text about, you know, are we going to spend the time and are you going to do this and do that? You meet in person. I understand people can be shy, but it was a complete 180 when she pulled up. So, needless to say, when they left, we both escorted them out. I then gave the guard another 20 mil and said, look, I'm fine. I'm conscious. I'm not drugged. Right after they left on the taxi, and then we went to deliberate. Me and my friend went to go have a meeting. I said, so what happened with yours by the time we separated and split ways? So, he also said that the girl that he was with was also texting Carol. They said they both were texting each other back and forth. So he said that there was a point that at one point she started to get relaxed and they were getting comfortable with each other. I think the time when they started to get comfortable, that's when Carol wanted to leave because she looked at her phone. He told me that she looked at her phone and didn't want to answer it because she was having fun. And then after that, she looked at the messages and she told my boy that said, yeah, it looks like we're going to have to go. So nothing happened. And I told him, I said, look, they came into the Airbnb. They was looking around just to see if there's any cameras or whatever have you. They came, they looked around. We know it's the body language. They asked for alcohol. We didn't have the alcohol. I offered them water. They refused. And when we got them into separate rooms, that's when they wanted to break out. And I think whatever they had planned wasn't going to go their way. That intensively saved our life. But then I told my friend and said, look, these are the situation of what could have happened if I wasn't there to let you know how things go down. So keep in mind in the future, don't let something like this ever happen. Either. Though it sucks that we didn't get anything out of it, but hey, it's still a learning experience. We both got out with our lives. And now, even though this is your very first night here, you're well equipped to experience and expect what could happen in Colombia if you're caught slipping. And I think from then on, my boy's been pretty chill. He's been on his P's and Q's whenever going to back and forth to Colombia. So, and let me know if you guys like this video, if this video was a dub or if this video was a good special. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And if you want to see more content, why don't you continue to watch the next video I got in store for you? And yeah, what say you guys? What do you think? My answer is just as good as yours. Could this have been the situation where we could have gotten scoped? Or was this a situation where she just wasn't that into me? Or she wasn't feeling it? Who knows? Alright, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Please don't try this at home. And yeah, man, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Nate, in your state.